What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day? Part 4. Also please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel. Account 1. When we were house shopping, we went to this big house surrounded by pretty dense landscaping in the front. Bushes mid, thigh and such. We met our realtor and walked through the house for a solid hour or so, then met on the front porch and talked a bit about what we liked, etc. We had parked near some bushes and the realtor, a petite female, had parked in the driveway. My husband and I got back in the car and continued to chat while the realtor left. Suddenly, about six feet away from the passenger door, a man stood up out of the bushes and walked into the house. He didn't look at us or give any indication he saw us. We called the realtor, who in turn called the owners, who said it was their son, and he doesn't really want us to sell. We ended up not buying that house, and it went off the market shortly after. I still wonder what the hell he was doing, hiding in the bushes, and I'm so glad the realtor had left before us. Account 2 when I was a kid, I came home from school and no one was home, which was normal. Pretty much immediately as I stepped in, the radio started loudly blasting from the speakers we had. I got startled out, so I screamed and ran outside, and after I got back in, it had stopped. How did it start and stop on its own? I still think about it to this day. Count three. I had my school ID written on a piece of paper. It had been a long morning. As I got in my car, it slipped from my pocket. I reached down to grab it, and it blew under my car. I was annoyed, so I said, fuck it, and just left. Hours later, in front of my apartment, which isn't super far from campus, but not super close either, as I was exiting my apartment, I noticed that same piece of paper had blown right in front of my doorway and at my feet. Probably not the creepiest thing in my life, but it was pretty recent and definitely weird. Account 4. I don't tell this story anymore because it sounds fake. In 1996, I was living in a northern Canadian town working on the oil rigs as a low-level laborer. I was 20, just starting out and couch surfing, when a friend offered me a windowless basement room in his mom's house, in an unfinished basement. His mom was on disability and he and his brother sort of ran the house. I set up down there with second-hand mattress, a little TV, and a fan. I had always considered myself a tough guy, partied a lot, fights, stupid macho bullshit like that, so I wasn't a squeamish young man. Well, after a little while living in that room, I started hearing things. Not external groaning or banging or the house shifting or anything like that. What I was hearing was a soft, malevolent chuckling in my ear, like someone whispering laughter, over and over again. I thought I was going crazy. There was a bookshelf in there, and I had a bunch of favorite books I packed around, and they kept falling off the shelf. I'd go up to use the bathroom upstairs and come down. No one had been down there. My books were on the floor. It got so bad, the laughing sound in my ear, that one night I, as a big tough guy, went upstairs and asked my friend if I could sleep on the floor in his room. I remember being surprised because he didn't make fun of me. This was a town where a good time was going to strip club and then beating the shit out of someone outside in the snow. The next day he said, Brent couldn't sleep down there either. He moved out pretty quick. Brent was his cousin, I guy I knew casually, so I went to find him. He was always on gyno row at the strip club on his days off. He looked at me with dead eyes and said, Yeah, man, that room is fucking haunted. I only went back in that room to move my shit out. Ended up sharing a place in a trailer park with another buddy. Account 5. When my friend and I were 17, we used to work in a pizza hut together. We were closing up one weekend, so it was about 11th hour and p.m. by the time we shut down and were ready to lock up. When we walked out to her car, there was an old lady sitting in her front passenger seat. My friend opened the driver door and asked the old lady before getting in. Can I help you? The old lady said, I just need a ride home. So we tell her that we just have to go back inside and call our moms to tell her we'll be late. We go back inside the store and lock the door and call the police. Within 10 minutes, the police are there arresting her. Turns out it was actually a 47-year-old man dressed up as an old lady. They found drugs and a knife on his body. Account 6. When I was in the early years of secondary school, probably 12-4 Tungtnish, 
My mom asked me to take a bag of sugar over to my elderly neighbor's house, as she'd lent us some sugar the previous weekend. Being a bit bratty, I didn't want to take it as I didn't feel like interacting with anyone. But I took it anyway, stood at my neighbor's front door, timber frame, frosted glass panel in the middle, and knocked, saw her walking down the hallway to the door, and decided that I really didn't feel like chatting, so rude of me. But anyway, so I put the bag of sugar on the doorstep and legged it back to my house, obviously didn't say anything to my mum about leaving without talking to the neighbor. Three days later, my neighbor pops round to our house and asks if we noticed anything strange around her house in the last couple of days. Naturally, my mum says, Oh, honey, B went and dropped the sugar to you. I thought you'd have spoken then. So I was caught out and had to explain that I'd rudely dropped the sugar and essentially ding, ding, edit, ding, dong, ditched. Neighbor goes on to explain that three days ago, her alarm was triggered and her house was robbed. She had been interstate and forgot to let us know. It wasn't her walking down the hallway to the front door, but the people burgling her home. Sometimes your intuition speaks to you in weird ways. But that day I just did not want to talk to anyone, and I still think about how lucky I am that I bailed when I saw that figure walking down the hallway. Who knows what could have happened. Account 7. I was like 13 at the time and I was on a trip to D.C. We had stopped, and I went into the public bathroom, it was empty, and I went to the urinal at the complete end of the room. Then, halfway through my piss, this big middle-aged guy who looked like he'd just butchered a group of children walks in and goes to the urinals. There was about a dozen urinals open besides mine, and this dude chooses the one a few over from me. He then glances over at me a few times, and then promptly switches over to the stall right next to me. He skipped over two whole urinals just to get the one next to me. Thankfully, I finished right as he did this, and I sped right the fuck out of there. I didn't even wash my hands. Pretty sure that was the closest I've ever been to being molested. Account 8. Public bathrooms seem to bring out the worst in people for some reason that I will never understand. I used to work at a gas station and I can't count the number of times I've found shit on the toilet seat, in the urinal, someone left the sink running full blast, found blood on the floor, had someone peek into the stall while I'm in there and make eye contact with me, had the toilet paper stolen, etc. The stall peeking was actually such a problem that the gas station had to install a barrier over the crack between the door and wall because so many fucking idiots would peek through it. Account 9 when I was a kid, maybe 10 or so, I was home by myself. Pretty normal since I was a latchkey kid. I was just hanging out and shooting a cardboard box with one of those cheap airsoft guns you have to rack every time you shoot. I hear a knock at the door and see a bald man through the peephole. It seemed like he was looking through it and saw me. Being a stupid kid that thought adults could get me in trouble, do not teach your kids that. I opened the door. He said he had a leak in his apartment downstairs and came inside to look for a plant or some reason for a leak. I was sketched out, and being a kid, I thought maybe I should shoot him with my dinky little plastic Walther and run. He said something along the lines of, huh, that's weird, turned around to see a little boy with his hand around a pistol grip at his waist. That guy got the hell out of there, nearly spun out on the hardwood. That was the day I either stopped a weirdo from breaking into my apartment, or the day I made my downstairs neighbor think the weird kid upstairs will shoot him. Account 10. In my teens and early 20s, my best friend and I used to have lots of sleepovers. His mom worked the night shift as a nurse, and his little brother usually stayed in his room and went to bed early. So we had the house for ourselves, we'd cook, eat dinner together, watch TV, and especially talk a lot. We also had a tradition that we called a night walks. Always around 11 p.m. or midnight, we'd leave the house and go for a long walk, 2.3 hours. It was especially nice in the summer because the air was warm, but there was a coolish breeze and the fields and pastures smelled amazing. There was one particular route we walked very often towards the end of it, the end. There was a big forest that we had to cross, and when we emerged from it, we were on a hill that overlooked the city. There was a bench, and sometimes we sat down to enjoy the silence, the distant lights, and to relax a bit before going downhill and home again. One time we did exactly this. 
Walking through the forest was always a bit scary in the middle of the night. So once we got out, my friend suggested to rest on that bench for a few minutes. We left the trail, walked 20 meters across a meadow, and finally got to the bench. The bench was located in a place where it was surrounded by trees and bushes, except in the front where you had a great view. We sat there for maybe 20, 25 minutes, had a smoke, and just talked about random stuff like space and philosophy. At one point, my friend remarked that he was getting cold because this happened in late fall, October, or November, so we decided to get going and walk home again. When we were almost back to the trail, my friend asked me if I had brought the lighter. I told him that I thought he had picked it up. We turned around and went back to the bench. For a while, we just kind of touched around on the wooden surface but couldn't find it. Since this spot was mostly surrounded by trees, it was very dark. My friend took out his phone and turned on the flashlight. To find the lighter, he waved the flashlight around, and that's when we saw him. There was a guy sitting right behind the bench, like maybe two main a sect. He was completely dressed in black and sat there, motionless, on the cold, wet ground, just staring at us. We hadn't heard any noise, which means he must have sat there for the entire time while we were sitting on the bench, just staring at the back of our heads. That alone is super creepy to think about still today. Of course, my friend and I both got really startled, and my friend said something like, Holy shit, man, you almost gave us a heart attack, haha, what the hell are you doing there? But the guy didn't respond anything. For a while, we just stared at him confused, and he stared back at us. Then I asked, why are you sitting there on the ground? No response. My friend asked, um, are you all right? Still no response. It was a really surreal situation, but something about it didn't feel good. I can't say what, but something about that guy gave me a really bad feeling in my stomach. My friend later told me that he had felt the same way. Suddenly, the guy got up and began to walk towards us. I said, uh, what's happening? And now the guy answered, but all he said was, yee as he walked around the bench to come towards us. I felt my friend's hand grab my coat and pull me backwards. He quietly said, let's get the fuck out of here, man. We walked a few steps backwards because we didn't want to turn our back on the guy. Then we turned around, ran back to the trail, and another 100 meters. When we turned around, we were relieved to see the guy hadn't come after us, but we still walked home as quickly as possible. To this day, I don't know why the hell that guy was sitting there, who he was, why he was silently staring at us for almost half an hour, what he planned to do when he got up and walked towards us, etc. All I can say is that my gut feeling tells me it was the right decision to run away rather than wait to find out. Account 11 in my dorm room, I heard the very distinct noise of those slider volume knobs on an iHome, if you know what the term is, help a sister out. As far as I know, this sound is not often or easily replicated by something else. I can't think of anything that makes that sound. I was alone and it happened only once. So I was like, hey, and didn't think anything of it until... The next day I checked my mail and had received a card from a person who previously went to my childhood church. That's a whole different offshoot of creepy, but I digress. To provide a bit of context, this individual and I had rarely spoken directly. I had no connection aside from attending the same church years ago a while back for maybe two to three months. Childhood time is a foreign concept. This person was also a registered sex offender. Now for the punchline. The card read, Have things gone bump in the night yet? That's it. That's all it said. What? Account 12. I grew up on a cattle ranch in a once rural town. Our house sat alone in the middle of a 200-acre plot of land, surrounded by a few small neighborhoods and some other small farms. There was a pasture light just outside the yard, visible from the living room, as a kid. Eh, teen. I had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night and randomly walk through the house to check that the windows and doors were closed. It was the 90s in a small town. We didn't always lock our doors. It was just a routine thing I did to help me get back to sleep. My dad is the same way. Anyway, when I was about 14, 
I was doing my checks, in the middle of the night, and I look out the window at the pasture light, and there, bathed in blue light, was a lone man. Just standing and staring at the house, I froze for a moment, then ducked down below the windowsill, hoping he didn't see me too. I only waited for a few seconds and peeked out again. But he was gone. I told my dad and he just nonchalantly shrugged it off and said that people will walk across our pastures all the time since we were in between two major roadways. Mostly homeless or locals without cars. You can bet I started making sure the doors were locked as well after that. Account 13. If you knew my sister and I, you'd know how odd this makes us feel. My sister was spending the night at a friend's house. She was around 16, 17 years old. That night, she had an extremely vivid dream of a man breaking into the friend's bedroom window and proceeding to sexually assault her. My sister, she awoke terrified because the dream was so vivid in its details. She proceeded to wake up her friend and tell her about the dream. As she is describing the dream, her friend stops her and proceeded to describe the man in the dream. According to the friend, the bed they were sleeping on was giving second, hand, and ever since receiving it, she had been having the exact same dream, needless to say. The parents got rid of the bed and the dream stopped. No matter how much time has passed and how many creepy things I've heard or experienced, this haunts me the most vividly. Account 14. I came home once from school when I was about 15 thou and 16 on a dark Friday night. It was winter at the time, so it started to get dark quite early. I was home alone when I arrived, my parents always got home late from work, and my brother had football practice every Friday after school. First thing I do when I get home is change to my PJs in my bedroom, which is located on the upper floor of the house. My bedroom sits directly above the kitchen. I eventually hear the kitchen door close suddenly, not violently or anything, just normally. In this case, it's the door that leads to the exterior back part of the house and initially did not think anything of it. I knew it was this specific door in question, as it makes quite a distinctive sound. I remember thinking it was either my brother who had possibly arrived early, or my grandma, who has a tendency to walk into our house and then call for either me and my brother sometimes. Eventually, I started to get weirded out when I couldn't hear anyone moving or saying anything. So I step out of my bedroom and call for both my brother and grandma on the top of the stairs. Nobody answered back and I still couldn't hear anything. Weird? I start to slowly walk downstairs and then stop halfway through, and I'm now facing the steps that lead to the living room. The kitchen is to the left. Suddenly, I start to hear what sounds like heavy breathing, like someone had just run a marathon and was extremely tired. It seemed to be coming from my left, so that meant in the kitchen, I was honestly completely unsure if it was my brain making these noises up in my head, as I was already feeling a little creeped out before I started walking down the stairs. I stood frozen for probably a minute or two just trying to decipher this supposed breathing I could hear. Eventually, it stops being now completely creeped out. I head back upstairs. Genuinely concerned someone was in the house, I grab a random object in my room to use as self-defense, just in case I ended up coming across an intruder. Ridiculously. I think I ended up picking my bedside lamp as a weapon. Can't remember for sure. I somehow gained the courage to go downstairs. Don't ask me how as I'm such a chicken when it comes to creepy situations like this. I check out the living room, toilet, nothing out of the ordinary. I step into the kitchen, nothing either. Nothing that could indicate someone had possibly been there. The only weird thing was that the kitchen door I mentioned was unlocked. My parents and my brother and I usually close both that door and the front door when we leave the house. But clearly someone had forgotten to lock it. The thing is, since it had been left open... I couldn't rule out the possibility that someone might have actually been in the house, even for just a few minutes. It's still something that creeps me out to this day. As I have no explanation for what I heard, Edit, I'm not from the USA, I'm European. Account 15. I had a lot of dreams where I would make sure all the windows and doors were locked. Usually nothing would happen. But every now and then I would spot a man across the garden outside the kitchen door flimsy door with big window. I'd immediately rush to lock it, 
but he'd run over in an instant and start pushing the handle down. I would then yell for my mum, and she would save the day and lock the door. Lol. The last time I remember having the dream, I saw the guy outside and didn't bother trying to lock the door. I just yelled for my mum straight away. But he started running over, and my mother didn't come. I got this awful dread as I realized she wasn't coming. Then the door opened, and I woke up, me being a frightened little kid. I went to my mum's room to tell her I had a nightmare. And well, she wasn't there. It was about 2.3 a.m., I think. Feeling of dread came then, lol. Turns out she went out to the garden as she heard cats fighting. No sight of a creepy guy outside. 